All right, the next one we've got a 135 pound pay per view mm. bout. Uh, let's see, it's uh, Scott Young Guns Jurgensen. He's one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, I like him a lot. Hey, babe, quick uh, little ironic thing because. Both Chris and I like him, but I know you have been a huge fan of his for a while. Mm -hmm. But remember, they used to bury him on WEC I cards. Know. Now, think about that. They buried him on WEC cards, makes it the UFC, you know, takes over, and now he's actually getting on pay per view yeah. UFC cards. When he, they used to, I mean, and he's always performed. Uh, you know, to me, he, he uh, reminds me a lot of, uh, of the carpenter, Clay Gita. Yeah. Uh, and he really has uh, that kind of excitement, that kind of energy level, and he, he comes he comes to fight, and uh, that's what I've always liked uh, about him. Uh, but Jurgensen's going to be taking on Jeff Big Frog Curran. Jurgensen's 12 and 4. He's got uh, notable wins over Ken Stone, Brad Pickett, Antonio Banuelos, Chad George, Takaya Mizugaki, uh, and the like, and losses to Demacio, the Angel of Death, Page, Antonio Banuelos, and uh, Dominic Cruz. So I mean, only really top. Yeah. Level losses uh, are the big notable ones. Curran, 33, 13, and 1. It's got notables over Donnie Walker, Rafael Asuncao, uh, uh, Vagni Fabiano, Charles Kid Chaos Bennett, no longer Crazy Horse, uh, Jason Dent, Tough Nine, uh, uh, Team U.S. cast member, and Bao Quach. Uh, losses to Phil Johns, Anthony Hamlet, uh, Kid Yamamoto, Matt Serra, Hatsu Yoki, Uriah Faber, Mike Brown, Joseph Benavidez, Tak uh, Takaya Mizugaki, and so then you got Curran, veteran. Jurgensen had uh, a little bit of inconsistencies lately, but he has been ascending. I think, uh, I, to me, I think it's uh, Jurgensen's fight to lose. Yeah. Uh, Curran is the type of guy, though, that you can't take lightly. He's got a lot of experience. He knows how to uh, make the most of his assets, and he knows how to exploit other people's weaknesses. Uh, but I still think uh, that Jurgensen's just too much fighter for Curran. Yeah, I think uh, Curran's going to be a tough guy. Like I think it's going to be a decision. I think uh, Jurgensen's just going to be a little bit uh, busier, mm -hmm. you know, and get, because that's kind of and plus it's a big moment. It's a big moment for both guys, but I think especially uh, Jorgensen is the fact that he gets this big stage. He's moved up to the main card, pay per view card, and and he's going to give a performance. I think both guys. It, it's going to be a great fight. Uh, a la the 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 uh, Clay Gita, the whole Carpenter thing. I think he's going to go crazy. I think he's going to be the busier, crazier fighter and win the decision. All right, next one, we've got a featherweight bout. This one features Hatsu Hiyoki taking on George Roop. And word is, since uh, uh, Jose Aldo uh, recently defended his title against Kenny Florian, that Hatsu Hiyoki could be in line for a title shot against Jose Aldo if he beats... Uh, George Roop in this one. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, Hatsu. This is like a little Asian corner going on here. Again, for you new listeners, uh, I have an uh, affinity for the Asian fighters. Always loved them, always will. Uh, Hatsu, now mostly it's a, a lot of times it's for their nicknames. Uh, sometimes, you know, you got, uh, you know, the Korean zombie. You've got, you know, this is a great nickname. This one, no different. Hatsu Iron Broom Hyoki. Iron Broom. It will not break. You know, the problem, though, with the iron when broom, you're you, sweeping can't, up. you can't get that little bit of dust. It's like dust. a rake. Isn't yeah. that considered a rake? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it kind of is, actually. <laughs> can't get those little bits of dust. Maybe there's no translation. Uh, yeah, go get the iron broom. <laughs> okay. Pick up the leaves. Hey, a good nickname. <laughs> there you go. Also, other nicknames, Child of Shudo was uh, Hatsu Hiyoki's nickname. He's got a 24-4 and 2 record, 4 knockouts, 12 submissions. Former Senguko featherweight champ, a former Shudo featherweight champ, former TKO featherweight champ. Uh, Hiyoki went up to Canada to train with uh, TriStar Gym under coach uh, Firas uh, Zahabi, G uh, GSP. Kenny Sounds Florian. like Roop is the sacrificial lamb here. Possibly. Uh, and, uh, George Roop is born in Minneapolis. <laughs> he is, his turn-ons are hot <laughs> yeah, Sundays exactly. and long walks in the beach. Yeah, huh, let's weigh this one, Dana. <laughs> Thanks. George Roop has a less impressive 12, 7, and 1 record. I think that was my locker combination yeah. in high school. Uh, three knockouts, four submissions. He's got wins over Josh Grisby, Chan Sung, the Korean uh, zombie Jung, Dave Kaplan. Notable losses to Shane Nelson, George Sotaropoulos, Ed Wineland, and Mark Hominick. So Roop versus. I, I have the to Iron give. Broom. No, I think the Iron Broom is going to sweep away. <laughs> Um, uh, but my thing about the uh, the Roop is, remember him on the Ultimate Fighter? Yes. He was like the last pick type guy. 
You know, he was he was a doormat. He was he didn't do very well on the show. Yet that guy has stuck around. I mean, I think of of all, all the fighters, especially in his season. But it, I mean, almost all the fighters, you know, that have gone through. And maybe I mean, Koscheck I think is is kind of evolved quite a bit. But I think Roop really has done a lot just to maintain his career both in the WEC and now in the UFC. So give him credit for that. I think when you start go- listing the resume here, uh, it doesn't look like a good matchup for Roop. But it will be a huge one. What he be, he beat Grispy. Yeah. Excuse me. That was a big fight. Sure. You know, beating the Korean Zombie was, yeah, was yeah. huge. Dave Kaplan as well. So, I mean, he has had some big fights, and we, we joke with the Roop. Well, that's why they're – this. that's the lipstick on this. But when uh, you rattled match. off the championships of the other guy in line, he is definitely in line. This is an opportunity for him to get a, a big win. Uh, you know, love Roop. I'm saying knockout second round I, I think by it, the Iron Broom. Well, the Iron Broom is more known for the submissions, only four oh. knockouts in his 24 wins. So, so you stick might with that. not be a good pick. <laughs> no, no, it's said it's in, it's in stone. Uh, but I, I think submission there, definitely. Um, next one, we've got Dennis the Menace Seaver taking on uh, Donald Cowboy Cerrone. This one's wow. going to be a great one. I'm surprised I, that one's not on the And on this pay-per-view. one is on the Spike TV bout. The, the, the opening for the pay-per-view is Hioki versus Root, but the Seaver versus Cerrone is on the Spike TV, so uh, you can enjoy that one. But uh, Seaver, of course, uh, in line for a uh, lightweight title shot. This one, obviously, is a big one for him. Got to get past Cerrone, who's uh, been kicking up some dust there, as the Cowboys tend to do. Cerrone is 16-3. and three. He's got notable wins over Charles Oliveira, uh, Paul Kelly, Chris Hordecki, uh, Jamie Varner, uh, Razor Rob McCulloch, and uh, Nate Moore, among others. Losses to Jamie Varner and Ben Henderson twice. Seaver is 19-7. and seven. He's got wins over Matt Hanson Wyman, George Sotteropoulos, Andre Winner, Spencer Fisher, Paul Kelly, Dale Hart, Matt Moore, Nate Moore, and Jim Wallhead. Losses to Daniel Weichel, uh, Jesse Lee Auden, Gray Maynard, Melvin Gillard, and Ross Pearson. This one, man, I don't tell you, you, you two, one is short and stocky and Seaver. Uh, the other is Cerrone, tall, lean guy. I mean, matchups, you, know, you, you think that Cerrone's got the reach advantage. He's got uh, some advantages there, but Seaver is like a pit bull. What, what do you like in this one? Uh, I definitely, I, I think Seaver's good. It's amazing. Once you rattle off all of the fighters that he's beaten, he's beaten some good guys. Um, Which guy I'm, are you talking about? Seaver. Yep. I'm just saying, but, you know, because his fighting, he seems like a rock'em, sock'em robot guy. You know, he's pretty physically, you know, built as far as you know, muscular, which is, you know, kind of rare stand-up guy, wants to throw the bomb. He seems to really throw a lot in his punches. Uh, I think that uh, Cerrone is just a much more well-rounded guy. I, my my biggest question right now is how Cerrone's going to beat him. I do think Cerrone's going to win this fight. I think he's he's... he's more of a dynamic striker. You see, you know, he puts combinations together. Seaver, at least in my mind, is more of a one-punch guy. He likes to throw big bombs. Uh, but I think that Cerrone, and if it goes to the ground, so it's either a submission or a knockout to, uh, in my mind. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Cerrone third-round submission. You know, it's an interesting matchup because Seaver, to me... And I think Cerrone's peaking. I think he's he's at his best now. You know, he, he's re- – see, I think Seaver is, is at his best, and, and I think his potential potential is uh, boundless. I think he does line himself up nicely for a lightweight title shot here very soon. Uh, this one, I do think it's just a matter of the matchup uh, being at what it is. Seaver, though, yeah, he's strong. You can consider him to be a one-dimensional, but sometimes certain matchups just don't fare well for guys like, um, you know, Clay the Carpenter we're talking about. He's not uh, well-rounded. He's he's you know he's one-dimensional. He's, and got, he's got, got a lot spaz, of energy. Dude. He's got the spaz factor. But some guys just can't figure that out, you know. And so and I think that uh, Seaver is going to be that to Cerrone. I think Cerrone's going to have a hard time figuring out how to deal with that that strength, that power, and and I think he basically bullies Cerrone around and uh, takes the decision. So it's my thought. 